The U.S. Virgin Islands are a territory of the United States of America. They operate under the same No Child Left Behind Act as schools stateside must. A brief history of the islands can be summarized from the Economic Development Authority website. The Spanish eradicated the native inhabitants of the island. The Dutch later turned the island into a slave trading post and repopulated it with almost a quarter million slaves. The Virgin Islands schools are in need of help. Juvenile crime, violence, teen pregnancy, and general delinquency are huge problems. According to the Virginia Scholars, an institute dedicating to furthering the socioeconomic status of the islands, says that considering murder per capita, the Virgin Islands is the most violent place in the United States, and if it were considered a separate country, it would come in second only to Honduras. Highly qualified teachers teach about 44% of classes. A single mother runs almost 25% of households. A language other than English is spoken in almost a third of homes. Languages include Spanish, French, and Creole versions of both. I was interested to see if improved access to early childhood education would affect the islands positively in regard to the long-term socioeconomic health of the territory. The Virgin Islands face many of the problems that inner city schools on the mainland face. I see the situation in the Virgin Islands with lots of hope. I see the 100,000 inhabitants of the Virgin Islands as a microcosm with important problems to be solved, and if solutions can be found there, I believe it would serve as a litmus test for solving many of the problems faced by the education system in the entirety of the U.S. I was interested to find through my research that there was already a committee that had formed in 2009 that was dedicated to exactly this question. The committee's goal was to lay out some sort of framework for preschool education in the Virgin Islands since it's not standardized in the United States. They came up with an early childhood advisory committee. This committee provided the framework as well as the strategic report issued in July 2012. The introductions to both documents state, the body of research in fields of neuroscience, education, psychology, and economics informs us that the foundation for a productive society of the future is built on healthy early childhood development. This research indicates that providing supportive and positive conditions for optimal childhood growth and development is more effective and less costly than attempting to address the consequences of early adversity later. The document goes on to outline a vision that all children in the Virgin Islands thrive, grow, and learn in safe, nurturing, healthy families and communities. Goals and objectives are articulated for governance and financing, health and wellness, quality of education, professional development, and a goal for strengthening families. This document also outlined the necessity of Head Start programs to use the high scope curricula. Over the last two years, this plan has been in effect from 2009 to 2011. In July of 2012, they released a document reporting on the success of the endeavors. The research suggests that over the last three years, we have made small improvements in the Virgin Islands preschool system. However, we are still seeing gaps in language and cognitive development. Pre-writing skills have not shown significant improvement either. We have seen improvements in gross motor, fine motor, and personal slash social skills. These Head Start programs are also serving more children than they were three years ago. In 2009, there were an estimated 5,007 children without access to licensed care. Now there are only less than 4,000 children not receiving access to licensed care. So if we're serving more children and we have a comprehensive framework to build on, why aren't we seeing larger improvements from these children? As you can see from the document itself, Early Head Start employs no bachelor's degrees and only seven associate's degrees. The regular High Scope Head Start program employs only three advanced degrees. Only 23 members of the staff have a bachelor's degree. Professional development is a big part of the framework that the Virgin Islands laid out, but it doesn't seem to be happening as fast as they need it to happen. The framework and the strategic report were both created with grant money, so I wanted to know if it was ultimately money keeping teachers out of these schools. I found an interesting news clip from April 10, 2012. 
discuss on this edition of News Radio. I'm Sandra Gamansi. The Department of Human Services testified before Senators Wednesday. DHS officials were invited to provide an update to the Health and Hospitals Committee on the status, upcoming plans, and existing challenges for all their programs. News News Erica Parsons has that story. The Department of Human Services is one agency tasked with serving the needs of the community, and Wednesday Senators acknowledged the tireless work entire staff undertakes to deliver those services. But federal and local budget cuts have severely hurt the department, and Wednesday's testimony from DHS officials showed that they're the ones in need. Human Services officials said they're losing almost $1 million because of sequestration cuts and their Head Start programs are taking the hardest hit. Commissioner Chris French told senators that quality early childhood education helps reduce future social problems. Their Head Start programs serve three to five-year-olds, but it's in high demand with a current enrollment of 894 territory-wide and a waiting list of almost 800. Their child care subsidy program helps low-income families, and nearly 500 children are served monthly. Several hundred are on a waiting list for that program. Both federally funded programs are being hit with a 5% sequester cut. Vince said budget cuts locally have been trending downward, and fiscal year 2014's numbers will be a little more than $9 million less than 2009's. Overall, um, in virtually every area of the department, we are working short staff. Um, direct service management levels. It impacts certainly not having the staff, um, not being able to replace vehicles, which is a you know growing consideration um, in some cases. Um, you know the supply budgets for some of the programs. Finch also outlined the status and challenges for their child welfare and juvenile justice systems, their intake and emergency services, children and family services program, and residential services, both locally and off island, all suffering because of budget cuts. Officials said the residential expenses is their biggest non-personnel expense at $15 million annually. During his testimony, Commissioner Finch told senators in many cases they know the fixes to many of the department's challenges. They just don't have the resources. Erica Parsons, News 2. So it turns out no matter how effective your framework and how good your intentions are, you can't retain qualified teachers if you don't have the money. I find it disheartening that money often has the final say in these types of reforms. A challenge is presented in any classroom when the staff is underqualified, underknowledgeable, or underpaid. However, if you put teachers like us, soon to be highly qualified teachers, into these same classes, you would see improvement no matter what the framework dictated because we understand the concepts underlying any framework more thoroughly than someone with a high school diploma or an associate's degree. I think this is ultimately why we're seeing this worldwide push towards professionalism in the early childhood care industry. Until we can rely on governments to make early childhood education compulsory, we will have to rely on non-governmental organizations and charities to provide these gaps in funding. Universities can also play their part in this process by facilitating exchange programs with soon to be highly qualified teachers. All teachers also need to be strong advocates for government funding for these type of programs. Even if we cannot rely on government funding, we need to be strong advocates for change and active participants in the process.